Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at a scene where you've got a kitchen and you've got some pots and pans and you can pick up the pots and pans and put them on the stove. And that's the scene. Um, this came as a, uh, well it didn't actually come as a request, but someone on Reddit posted an example of a cooking game they were trying to make and they mentioned they didn't know how to pick stuff up and put them on the stove. Um, and so I thought I'd make a scene for this. As always, um, you'll find a link in the description for uh, where to download the scenes, uh, the scene file for this. And credit for the oven goes to user Santoche from Open Game Art. Um, and so as you can see, the scene's quite simple. Um, you walk around, you pick up uh, pots and pans, and you can place them on the stove. Um, let's dig into how this is made. So firstly, we have uh, four objects. Points, we use points quite a bit in this tutorial. Um, so what points do is they let you uh, specify where, well, something on an object is. Now two are automatically defined for you, origin and center. Um, you've probably encountered origin if you've ever noticed that your sprites just weren't lining up somehow. It's probably because you needed to put the origin somewhere else. Um, well, on the stove, sprite, I put a new point called hob, and I've attached that, it's a little difficult to see, but I've attached that to the center uh, of the hob, and what I do, when um, the chef places pots or pans, I, I move them to that point. The chef is uh, a very basic uh, sprite um, with a top-down movement behavior, um, not much else uh, oh, actually, there is more points. Um, if you look on under the points, um, you'll see that I've added one to the chef called Carry, and I've attached that sort of to his right hand. Um, yes, it's a very loose definition of hand, but just uh, let me be. My art is not very good. Um, so I've attached a point to hand uh, called Carry, and when I want the chef to carry something, I will attach that object to that point. Um, oh, one last thing also on Chef is that he has an object, sorry, he or she or they has an object variable called is carrying, and it's automatically set to false. And I will set is carrying to true when the Chef is carrying something. Pan is, no, let's not get ahead of ourselves, pan is just a red square. Um, there is nothing special about its points. It also has no behaviors, but it does have a variable called is placed. And we use is placed to know whether the pan is on the floor or whether it's on the hob, because if it's on the floor, we want the chef to be able to pick it up, but if it's on the hob, we don't want the chef to pick it up. Um, and pot is identical. Oh, there we go. Is placed false. So that's the start of our scene. What we have then, um, if you go into the events, is you'll see this. Um, the top one is my uh, quick restart testing helper. I use this for everything that I do because I find it easier just to be able to press Q to reload the scene and then just go for it. And then we have the three interesting groups. The first inter the first group is contains all the code for picking up a utensil when the chef isn't carrying anything and the utensil isn't on the stove. I use utensil here t as a generic name for pots and pans. The second group is about removing old utensils from the stove when a new one is added. And the last one is about carrying utensils and placing them on the stove. It also handles uh, respawning utensils, but that's just for my scene. So let's dig into it. So how do we pick up a utensil? Well, first we check, because of the way GDevelop works, we have to do each test separately. So we check, is the chef in collision with a pan? Is the chef not carrying anything, so is it is carrying variable set to false, and is the pla is the pan not placed on a stove? So if is placed as false, it's not on a stove. If place is true, it is on a stove. We don't want to pick it up. Well, if all those are true, then what we do is we say yes, we are picking up a pan, and the uh, equal and opposite is for pot. So far, so good. Let's do with carrying now. This one looks slightly larger, but let's collapse this and we'll just take it one half at a time because the other half is identical. If the chef's carrying a pan, 
what we want to do is we want to select the pan he that is picked. Um, in order to make the code sort of like separate out, I've done it this way. It's possible that you could have uh, nested this. The, the way GDevelop works is you need to be able to select the item and then carry that selection through. So when I say pick the pan that is closest to the chef's carry point, what I'm effectively saying is, well, if the chef is if the chef is right on top of this pan, I expect that to be the closest, so I want to select that. I could quite have easily have pulled all of this and attached it underneath, but I actually know that wouldn't strictly have worked. Ignore what I'm saying. Um, getting ahead of myself. Let's just stick with how I've done it, and uh, I'll, if you have alternatives or thought suggestions, I'll let you try them out and feed them back. Bear with me, I'm getting used to this. So, if the chef is touching a pan, what we want, if, if we say the chef's carrying a pan, what we want to do is select the pan that is uh, closest to the chef's carry point, which in effect is going to be the one that the player has touched. We then have two halves to what we do next. The first is, um, as long as the chef's carrying a pan, sort of just stick the pan, move the pan onto the chef's carry point and rotate it to its angle. That's how we get the sticking position. So if we touch this, um, that's how we achieve the pan appearing to be carried by the chef. We're just sticking it to the point on the sprite. Whilst the chef's carrying the pan, if we press the space key, we want to know if the chef can put down the pan on the stove. So what we do is we raycast. Now what raycast does is it sends an invisible line from A to B. Um, and the way GDevelop works is it sends A to B and looks for X. And looks for Y. So we send a line from our chef, so chef Y, X, chef Y, in the direction the chef's looking. And we send it for 50 pixels. And we're looking for a stove. So send it from A. 50 pixels and look for B. If we get that, we know that what we're saying is that the chef is close enough to the stove. Cool. Um, and it also automatically selects the stove for us, um, which is useful if you have more than one stove in the scene. So what we do then is we move the pan that the chef is carrying and the pan is selected from up here, it carries on down. So we move the pan over to the point called hob on the stove. We set the angle to zero just to straighten up. And then we then say the chef is not carrying anything and the pan is placed. And then for like replayability purpose, we um, reset the pan over there. And that's it. Oh, right, last one. Um, so we reset the pan. So we have now played, we've picked up an object up here we place the pan on the stove here. Um, well, we also want to remove old items because if we don't, they will visibly just pile up on the stove. And so this is what we do. Um, when the space key is pressed, we check if the um, chef is in range of the stove. We're using the exact same ray cast as before. Chef, 50 pixels to stove. If the chef is in range of the stove and looking at it, um, and the chef is carrying something, we have to do not false because we don't know if it's going to be a pot or a pan. Um, but if we do, but if we know that when the chef is not carrying something, it's false. When it's not false, it means the chef's carrying something. Um, what we do is we say we use this. It's one of the collision. It's one of the collision uh, helpers. What this asks is, is there a pan object somewhere in um, somewhere touching this point? And that point is the hob point. If you remember, that's the exact one that we attach um, the pan object to. What that means is if there is a pan currently on the stove, this will be true because there will be a pan. That point will be inside some pan. And then what we do is we can delete it. Um, and so that's if we don't have this section, let's just delete this pan. What you'll see is that um, we can place our pan on the stove but when we placed our pot, well, it just piles on top of each other. That's not what we want. Cool. Um, 
And so there you have it. I'm going to attempt to do something very dangerous now and edit my code live, which is going to be very scary, um, but sort of just to demonstrate out um, how this would look in maybe a more realistic setting. If I take out the regeneration code, what I can do is I can, should be able to duplicate my hobs, put one up there, put one up there, I should be able to drag more pots and pans out into the scene. I do love it when I have ideas of, oh, this would be a nicer way of doing things as I'm recording. This is always the best way to do it. Anyway, we've now got more pots and pans. Um, we should be able to see things behaving a little more as expected. So I can walk over this, and I can put this on this stove, and I can walk over this, I can put this on this stove, and I can replace it, and I can replace it. I'll place this one with itself, and I'll place this one, mm, it's a little boring, but yeah, I'll replace it with itself. And there we go. Um, everything's behaving as expected. This is what we want to see in a tutorial. Perfect. Uh, I think I'll actually leave the scene like this, actually, because uh, I think it better demonstrates what's going on. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please leave your thoughts, comments, and suggestions down below, including future requests for videos, because uh, I'm enjoying using GDevelop and learning about it by doing these kinds of different projects, mini projects. And as always, I'll see you at the next one.